So, brother, do you see yourself on the side right here, Eric? Eric, do you see yourself on the side here? Who do you I'm at see? The top. You at the top. So you Judah. Okay, how about you, I boss? Say American Indian, Jesus, no. man. Huh? Jesus, that's it. Okay, what what tribe did what did Jesus come from? Black and Indian. Huh? I said black and Indian. Me. No, let's get it. Hebrews 714. Okay? You are what your dad was. Right, you yeah. understand me? So, <coughs> are you is your dad an American guy? Yeah. Okay, so you would be from the tribe of Jesus. Yeah. I mean the tribe of Judah, not right, the right, tribe right. of Jesus. He okay, got it. <laughs> Alright? Alright. So Let's get the proof of what Jesus came from, because Christ did not come from the American Indians. Or he came from this tribe. Go ahead. This is the book of Hebrews, chapter 7 and verse 14. Bring it out. For it is evident. So it's what? For it is evident. We have the evidence here in the Bible, read, that our Lord, our Lord, Jesus Christ, sprang out of Judah. He came also out of the tribe of Judah. Now, as you can look here, okay, what's your name, Bob? Casey. Casey? Yeah. Which one of these images is Jesus Christ? One on far left. Point to it. How do you know? Where can I find that scripture? Moses. Revelation, brother. Huh? Revelation. He read the sign. All his brother, smart brother. Yeah. All right, let's go. So where we I, can I, find the description of Christ. Wasn't it, um, yeah, you gotta, wasn't it, I got a question, wasn't it Moses though? Moses what? Um, the high, high, high God of the tree. Remember um, what we looked at like on Easter, um, the Ten Commandments? Uh -huh. That reminded me of that, wasn't it? What, what, what reminds you of that? God, he made miracles, like, for his people, like, you know, saving his people, his wives and everything from the water, okay. from Egypt and, you know, Egypt. Okay, they, um, yeah, the that's Egypt. part of our history. Yeah. But Christ was not yeah. Moses. Right, right. Moses and Christ were two different men. Yeah. Okay? Now I'm going to show you how Christ looked, and you were right. Go ahead and read that. Hey, check this out, Brother Eric, real quick. The book of Revelation, chapter 1 and verse 14. Uh -huh. His head and his hairs were white like wool. So, Christ's head and his hairs, the head, the hair on his head and the hairs on his face were what? White like wool. So, according to the Bible, you brothers feel your faces, you brothers feel the top of your head. Doesn't it feel like sheep's wool? So Christ had the same texture, hair, uh, you had the same texture Christ had. Okay? So Christ will be what? Classify what? Here in America today as a Negro. Okay? Uh, Read that. His head and his hairs were white like wool. Uh-huh. As white as snow. Right. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. Uh-huh. And his feet. And his what? And his feet. Uh huh. Like a fine brass. Brass is what color? What co what's the color of brass? Brother Eric, help him out. What color is brass? Brown. Brown. Let's see how dark brown this brass is. Read. As if they burned in a furnace. Christ was a dark skinned man. That's so, right. lift that sign. Let's lift Caesar Boa. Lift Caesar Boa. Lift Caesar Boa. So who in the hell is this then? If Christ is described as a black man in the Bible, who is this? Because everybody in our neighborhood worships him in the Sunday church as God. But the Bible just described him as what? Go ahead and put him down for of the uh, black Christ. Go ahead and read that. His head and his hairs were white like wool, uh -huh. as white as snow, uh -huh. and his eyes were as a flame of fire, uh -huh. and his feet, and his what, and his feet, and his what, and his feet, uh -huh. like a divine bread, uh -huh. as if they burned in a furnace. So his skin was so brown, it looked like it was burned in a furnace. Right. So Christ was a dark skinned man, like you, like you, okay? So. This is not Christ. This dude's name is Cesare Borgia. He was painted by Leonardo da Vinci during the 14th, 15th century as to be depicted as Christ. And now we have this image in our churches worldwide. 
okay? To deceive you and believing that Christ looks just like you. You understand me? All right? Now, I want to go to uh, Moses, because he mentioned Moses. Now, Moses, now you know Christ was from the tribe of Judah, like you, right? But Moses was from the tribe of Levi. You know what I want? Check this, this out. I'm going to show you where Moses is from. Go ahead. This is the book of Exodus, chapter 2 and verse 1. Uh-huh. And there went a man of the house of Levi. Of the what? Of the house of Levi. You, hey, brother, do y'all see the house of Levi? Where y'all see Levi at? Oh, yeah. Levi. Do y'all see Levi? Yeah. Where? Show it to me, brother. All right. So it said a man of the house of Levi, read, and took to wife a daughter of Levi. Uh -huh. And the woman conceived and bare a son. And when he saw him, that he was a goodly child, uh -huh. she hid him three months. So Moses was from the what? Tribe of Levi. Okay? Uh, believe it or not, those were men were set up to be the high priest in Israel. Okay? <laughs> So Moses and Jesus are from the same, from the same family, from the tribes of Israel. Okay, give me that in Genesis about Jacob being called Israel. Okay, so Levi and Judah come from a man called Israel. Okay, Israel was our forefather. It wasn't Shaka Zulu. It ain't nobody from a so-called African or Hamite lineage. Okay, let's get that. This is the book of Genesis, chapter 32, and verse 27. Uh-huh. And he said unto him, what is thy name? Uh-huh. And he said... So this is a little bit of history. This is when Jacob encountered the angel, and they go and they conversate. Go ahead. And he said unto him, what is thy name? Uh -huh. And he said, Jacob. So our forefather Jacob, free. And he said, thy name shall be called no more Jacob. He said, your name not going to be called Jacob no more, read. But Israel. But who? But Israel. So this is our forefather, Israel. Okay? You descend from a man called Israel. Okay? And he had uh, 12 sons. Right. Okay? Moses was run from his son, Levi. And Christ was from his son, Judah. The right. head tribe. Read. For as a prince. Has thou power with God? So he said, your name means something. Okay? There's no meaning in the word black. Okay? That is a color. There is no meaning in African American. Okay? There's nothing to stand on that thing. Okay? But your name being Israel means what? For as a prince. You are a prince, Brother Eric. And what's your name again? William. Brother Will. You are a prince. Read. That has power with God. That you too, you three men, have power with God. When you accept your true name, okay? When you believe that you are an Israelite according to the Bible, okay? You don't descend from black. You don't descend from African American. Read. And with men, it has prevailed. Go ahead, read that again. And he said, thy name shall be called no more Jacob. Uh-huh. But Israel. But who? But Israel. Read. For as a prince has thou power with God. Understand you two brothers have power with God. Okay? Right. If you keep the commandments, repent from your sins, God was go is going to deal with you. That's God right. is going to walk with you. God is going to guide you through this society. Right. Because look at what you see around you. You see crime, drugs, prostitution. Homelessness amongst our people, poverty, okay? Give me that Deuteronomy 28 real quick. God said those things are going to happen to us if we didn't keep his commandments. So in order to get your power back, brothers, you must recognize who you are in the Bible. Okay, read that. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 15. Oh, but it shall come to pass. This is a future prophecy, brothers. It shall come to pass. If thou will not hearken, if thou will what? If thou will not hearken, if thou will what? If thou will not hearken, if you don't listen, read unto the voice of the Lord thy God. The voice of the Lord thy God is in this Bible. Right. It's time for you two to start listening to the voice of God. That's read. Right. read. To observe 
to do all of his commandments. No, some of his commandments. Observe to do all of his commandments. So you must do all of God's commandments. Read. And his statutes. Uh-huh. Which I command thee this day. What year is it? What year is it? Yes. 2023. It's 2023. And even unto this day, we are responsible for keeping God's law. You understand that? Read. That all these curses, he said, if you don't listen, all these what? All these curses. All these what? All these curses. All these curses. Is a curse a good thing, Eric, or a bad thing? A bad thing. Is, is a curse good or bad? I need feedback from you. That's, that's good, but it's bad. Wait, wait, how it give me, Lord have mercy. How can because it be good you wasn't and paying bad? attention to actually do good. the things that they say in the Bible. Which means that it's good on one hand, but it's bad on the other. I ain't never heard of a good, bad curse. A curse is evil. A curse is a bad thing. They okay? say it is. Is poverty good? No, it's not. That's a curse then. Right. Is homelessness good? No. That's a curse. Is fatherless uh, houses good? No. No, that's a curse. Uh, okay? Read that again. So a curse is not a good thing. Read. I command thee this day that in 2023, read, that all these curses uh -huh. shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So even to this day, these curses came upon our people. Even to this day. Okay? We're going to go over some curses, and those curses are going to identify who you are. Right. Go ahead. Uh, verse 45 and 46. Verse 45. Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee and shall pursue thee uh -huh. and overtake thee. Pursue us. Poverty has pursued us and overtaken us. Okay? Uh, fatherless houses have pursued us and overtaken us. Right. Drugs have pursued our, our, our people and overtaken our people. Read. Till thou be destroyed. Uh -huh. We have been destroyed because of those things that the white man put in our neighborhood. Drugs. Alcohol, okay, prostitution, okay, read. Because thou hearkenest not. Because why? Because thou hearkenest not. We did not listen to God, read. Or to the voice of the Lord thy God. Uh huh. To keep his commandments. To what? To keep his commandments. To keep God's commandments, read. And his statutes, which I commanded thee. Uh huh. And they, and they, the curses, Shall be upon thee for a sign. These curses are going to be upon us in 2023 as a sign. How do you know that's rallies? You know what I mean? How do you know that's rallies? It has a sign that says rallies, right? So you know that's the establishment of rallies, right? They said the curses was going to be upon us like a sign. So you'll identify the people by the curses that are upon them. Right. You understand me? Okay, so read. And they should be upon thee for a sign. And they go, they said, God said, I'm reading out of the Bible, God said these different signs are going to be upon you to identify you. Go ahead. And for a wonder. <laughs> and, for, and for a wonder. I got it. No. Other nations, when they look at us, they wonder how do we make it. How we survive. Right, how do we how we make That's something out of nothing. Okay? Read. And upon thy seed forever. So God said these curses are gonna be upon our seed forever. Right. Until we repent as a people. Okay? Give me um uh, 68. Sis, I want you to relate to me with something. The book Read of Deuteronomy, that. chapter 28 and verse 68. Uh -huh. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with Ships. Are you familiar with the Bible? Okay, so you understand what happened to the Israelites when they were in Egypt? What happened? What significant history happened to those people on this side when they were in Egypt? What happened? Were we the kings? Were we the rulers of Egypt? So what were we? We were the slaves in Egypt. Right. So Moses told, now read that again. I want you to put two and two together. Read that. 168, and the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. So God said, 
later on in history, I'm going to bring you back into Egypt again. Right. With what? With ships. So Egypt must mean something. Because the first time we were in Egypt, we walked out of that place. Moses split the Red Sea, and we went into the Promised Land. But this time, Moses said, we're going to go back into Egypt with what? With ships. Okay, so Egypt must mean something. You got it? This, this is, is what the word Egypt means. This is the book of Exodus, chapter 20, and verse 2. Uh -huh. I am the Lord thy God, uh -huh. which I brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Three. Out of the house of bondage. Out of where? Out of the house of bondage. So slavery means house, or Egypt means house of bondage. Okay? So let's read it in its entirety. Deuteronomy 28, 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. With what? With ships. So this time, Moses prophesied that the Israelites were going to go back into bondage again on slavery, on slave ships. Or as you can see, these are the slave routes. Okay, we were dropped off in West Africa. We, we, we were in West Africa. We were all down in South America, the islands, North America. Okay, who, went, who else went into slavery on slave ships? No one else. That was written in the Bible, my sister. Right. Thousands of years before it happened in the 1400s and the 1600s, Moses prophesied that you're going to go back into slavery again with what? With ships. With what? With ships. Read. By the way, world, I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. You we will not see our homelands again. Okay? Read. And there, and there, when we got off those slave ships, ye shall be sold. Who gonna what? Ye shall be sold. Who bought and sold us, my sister? Who bought and sold so-called blacks, Latinos, and Native Americans? Who bought and sold us? It was the white man. Go ahead, read. There, ye shall be sold unto your enemies. Wait, God called them your what? Your enemies! Wait a minute, Billy's my friend. Your enemies! God said your enemies will buy and sell you. This is prophecy that what? Came to pass, right? So that makes what? This Bible what? Does this make this Bible a fairy tale? It makes it what? A true book. That's right. Because no information in the world can prophesy about a people and then it comes to pass, and we're living it today. Okay? Give me another curse, 48. I see you have your work uniform on, right? You're on your way to work. Do we own uh, Family Dollar as a people? Right. So this is another prophecy Moses gave the Israelites on the last day. Read. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, and verse 48. Uh -huh. and therefore, shall thou serve thy enemies. God said in the last days, if you didn't keep his laws, you were going to be made to serve your enemies. Right. In what? Which the Lord shall send against thee. And the Lord sent these enemies against us. Read. In hunger. In hunger. We don't own rallies. We don't own giant eagle. We don't own hyenas. Our enemies own those grocery stores in order to feed our families. Read. And in thirst. And in what? And in thirst. When I go to Family Dollar, I got to go, if I want some water, right, I got to get it from my enemy. Because my people don't own Family Dollar. They don't own any of the products made for Family Dollar. So God said for, to, hey, sis, I'm pretty sure you, you got a water bill, right? If you don't pay that water bill, what's going to happen? They go shut it off. Read that again. And in thirst. Uh huh. And in nakedness. So God said, if you don't keep my laws, you gonna serve your enemies in hunger. You gotta go to them for food. You gotta go to them for water, and you gotta go to them for what else? And in nakedness. The clothes that you have on is not made or manufactured by our people. 
We got to buy clothes from our enemies. That's a curse the Lord put on us in the last days to identify us who we are today. Read. And, and what of all things, sis, when you want to get a bus pass to get on that reader, you got to go to your enemy to buy the bus pass. In order to travel throughout the city of Cleveland, you got to get on the, the bus, right? right? You got to buy the bus ticket from your enemy. If you want toilet paper, well, you have to wipe things down and wipe yourself. God said in the last days, you got to have to what? Serve your enemy. You understand me? Read. And then what of all things? When you want to bury your dead, people that unfortunately pass in our families, we have to go get a death certificate, correct? We got to get a birth certificate when people are born. God said you're going to have to register those people with your enemy. When God said one of all things, he was not playing with us. That's how hard-headed the so-called black Latino and Native American is in the last days. Okay, read. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. He shall what? And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. Come here, sis. Look up different the different days of slavery. This is prophecy by Moses now. This is thousands of years before the first slave ship from Spain came and got us. Moses said this will happen, and did it not happen? So what does that prove? That we are what? We are the what? Does it only happen to these people on this side? Where do you see yourself on that side? Which one are you? Are you from the tribe of Judah? Are you from the, uh, which are American black? Are you West Indian? Are you from West Indian descent? Where are you at? Huh? American Indian. We got another Jadite in the building. All praise That's him. Right. So you are not American Indian. You are a Gadite from the uh, uh, a Gadite uh, tribe from the tribe of Gad of the nation of Israel. That's right. That's your nationality, sis. That's right. You ain't Negro. You're not black. Black's the color of our pants. Okay? You're not African American. African American came from two white men. Leo Scipio Africanus and Amerigo Vespucci. Two white guys. We're not descended from two white guys. You understand me? Okay, so understand. This is all this is another prophecy I'm gonna give you. Go ahead, read 37. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, and verse 37. Uh -huh. And thou shall become an astonishment. We have become got Moses prophesied in the last days that the children of Israel will be an astonishment in the last days. Let me give you an example of a, an astonishment. When you have a brother kill another brother, take his money, okay? That's an astonishment. The way our sisters dress, okay? Uh, red hair, yellow hair, blue hair, okay? I know you didn't know even blonde hair, okay? That is an astonishment, okay? You see how our sisters dress? That's an astonishment according to God. The other nations are astonished or shocked on how we live, okay? And, and a proverb, and a proverb. Niggas ain't, damn, she finished it for me. That lets you know that's a proverb that is worldwide against the black man. Right. You understand me? That's a proverb, okay? Uh, you give uh, all niggas eat chicken. That's a proverb, okay? And, I was thought, and watermelon. <laughs> Those are proverbs. The God said in the last days, you're going to be called by those things. Those are going to be signs in the last days to show you that Indeed, you are the children of Israel. Read. And a byword. And a what? And a byword. Byword. Okay? Like a bicycle it has two wheels. Okay? You will be called a byword. Okay? African American. Negro. Okay? Or a Puerto Rican. 
or Honduran or Chilean, okay? Those are byword's that we have been called. Three. Among all nations. Uh -huh. All the nations know us as niggas. Three. Whether the Lord shall lead thee. No matter where the Lord scattered us. 64 next. No matter where the Lord scattered us, we are going to be called by those bywords today. 364. Verse 64. And the Lord shall scatter thee. One of the curses the Lord said for our disobedience that he was going to what? And the Lord shall scatter thee uh -huh. among all people. I can, me and you can take a trip. We can go to Switzerland, right? The whitest of the whitest country. And I can see a brother that looks just like him. I can see a brother that looks just like him in those countries. Right. Because God scattered us, read. From one end of the earth, uh -huh. even to the other. Even from one end to the other side of the earth. You'll see our people scattered. Okay? Read. And there, and there, thou shalt serve other gods. God said in those Latin the last days, those countries you're scattered in, you're going to serve other gods. You see this? This is a other god. Okay? Because according to the Bible, Christ did never look like this. That's right. Okay? Christ is described as a black man according to the Bible. That's right. And we can prove that to you today. So you're going to be scattered for other gods. Which one? Which neither? Hell, nor their fathers have known. Moses ain't know about a white Jesus. Christ ain't know about a white Jesus. Jeremiah, Isaiah, Ezekiel, they never talked about a white Christ. Read. Even wood. The wood. This. What does the wood represent in Christianity? The what? She on point today. That's the right. cross. That's right. Many of our people will be caught up in Christianity. Christianity is not in the Bible. That's right. I repeat, Christianity is not in the Bible. And I dare anyone to challenge us on that. Okay? Read. And stone. And in stone. So, Moses is prophesying about two major religions that our people are going to be caught up in in the last days. Wood representing the Christian, the Christianity, and stone representing the Islamic religion. They have to worship the what? The Kaaba stone, correct? Those are the stones. The wood is the cross. The majority of our people in the last days are caught up in Christianity and Islam, okay? Those are signs to show us that we are the children of Israel in the last days. That's right. Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support. Nation is children with role models. 